I'm Mandy Barker, a photographic artist from Leeds, England, and for the past 10 years I've only photographed marine plastic debris. At first I photographed debris as I found it on the shore, but people didn't really engage with the images like I wanted them to. People see rubbish everywhere at the side of the road, people who fly tip, and I realised that I had to do something more to try and attract people to look at the image. So this is when I became very interested in the combination of text and image and what photography could communicate in this way. My work crosses different platforms and engages not only through photography, but also through art, environmental platforms, education and science. I work with scientists because I want to inform the audience with accurate and current information. I wouldn't want my work to be seen as art for art's sake. For me it has to do a job and that is to deliver a message of awareness. I want my work to give science almost a visual voice. Indefinite was my first series of work and it focuses on 10 individual items of plastic that collectively form a timeline relating to the amount of time it takes each different plastic material to degrade in the ocean. One to three years shows a plastic bag that on average is used for only 12 minutes before disposal. Afterwards, if the bag gets into the sea, it can cause entanglement or suffocation. But ingestion is the main problem, especially as sea turtles often mistake bags for jellyfish and squid. Since this series was created in 2010, scientists now estimate that a plastic bag can take 10 to 15 years to degrade in the sea. In fact, all plastic that's ever been produced on the planet unless burnt, is still here in some form, whether it be in land film, as microplastics in the soil, air or sea. My second series is called Soup, and is a word scientists use to describe the mass accumulation of suspended plastic that exists in the world's oceans. The captions are given by listing them as ingredients of soup, which represent the possibility that all these parts could eventually be ingested by marine creatures. Turtle soup shows the result of a container spill of children's bath toys. Twelve shipping containers fell overboard from the ship the Evergreen Ever Laurel in 1992. 28,000 bath toys entered the North Pacific Ocean. The turtles in this image show toys that have existed in the sea for 16 years and were recovered off the west coast of Alaska. Soup refused shows plastic debris recovered from a beach on a Greek island. I saw that goats were eating something on the shoreline and when I went down to have a look, I realised it was plastic washed in from the sea. I collected the plastic that had been attempted to be ingested by the goats and I could see the teeth marks on each piece. I wanted to recreate in the composition what I had witnessed, so I created a mass of plastic in the foreground as if on the shore and then the smaller pieces in more space to give the effect of the plastic drifting back out to sea. The soup images are created by first collecting the plastic from beaches and oceans, sometimes for a specific object's colour, and some objects I've been collecting for the past 10 years and not yet used. I use a black velvet background and scatter the tiny pieces randomly on this, then do the same with medium sized pieces. The last few larger objects are sometimes placed to balance the composition. These three images are then layered together. I like the idea of the scattering arrangement of pieces because I feel it relates to how the pieces would be floating around in the sea. Where Am I Going is an image I created after being awarded an environmental bursary from the Royal Photographic Society in 2012. The bursary was to take part in a scientific expedition to cross the North Pacific Ocean from Japan to Hawaii, sailing across the tsunami debris field after the Thoku earthquake and Japanese tsunami the previous year. As I had no previous sailing experience or really any idea of the journey that awaited me, I wanted to express this through an image of balloons. When balloons are inflated they can float up to an altitude of five miles and when they burst they descend back down to earth and most of them end up in the sea. I likened this to the unknown journey of my impending expedition. Following my expedition across the Pacific I was invited to speak at a youth conference for Plastic Free Seas, an organisation based in Hong Kong. During my time there I collected rubbish from the beaches on a scale I had never seen before. One particular beach had rubbish as high as 12 feet. I was inspired to make an image from single-use cigarette lighters whilst I was there because I came across one that had a dolphin printed on it. And this made me think of the endangered species of pink dolphin that were declining in Hong Kong Harbour, just in front of me. I decided to base the composition on a pod of dolphins and to emphasise one in particular that also had a panda printed on it. This was the emblem of China and it's facing away from the rest of the group 
as if Mother Nature were turning her back on man's inability to handle its own waste. The penalty series was a different concept from my previous soup style work because I decided I wanted the public to be involved in helping me recover the objects to be photographed. But also I wanted to try and raise awareness at the time of a major sporting event, the FIFA World Cup 2014. I put out a call on social media to ask people to post me footballs they had found washed up from the sea. And soon I started to get emails with photographs of people all around the world and the footballs they had found. I had an email from a man on the west coast of Scotland who found 48 balls, then another email to say he'd found 128. Eventually, three weeks later, he recovered 228 footballs for the project. In total, I received 769 footballs from 41 different islands and countries, from 144 different beaches and by 89 members of the public. Footballs came from as far away as Brazil, Singapore, Africa, and one ball was recovered on the west coast of the United States after having travelled across the North Pacific Ocean after the tsunami in 2011. The name written in marker pen on the football was traced back to its owner in Osaka. Beyond Drifting in Perfectly Known Animals is a project which is different from my earlier work. The work is based on current scientific research that plankton are now eating microplastic particles in the marine environment. The work followed a residency in Cobe, Cork in Ireland and is centred around the marine biologist John Vaughan Thompson. He studied plankton in the 1800s and made pioneering discoveries about the metamorphosis of the crab and also invented a plankton net which he gave to Charles Darwin on his voyages. I presented the project in the form of an old battered antique science book because I wanted to trick the viewer into thinking they were looking at early plankton samples when in fact they were actually looking at plastic. I also gave the plastic samples Latin names and put the word plastic within the letters to make reference to the fact that now plankton have plastic within them and so do their names. My continued commitment to photography is to make the public aware of facts concerning the detrimental effects of marine plastic. I hope by presenting them in a visually accessible way will connect the issue to a wider audience and in some way help inspire change. If photography has the power to encourage people to act, to move them emotionally, or at very least make them take notice, then this must surely be a vital element to stimulate debate and ultimately change. If I didn't believe my work did any of these things, then I wouldn't have been motivated to continue this single issue for over 10 years. <laughs>